and uh, welcome back okay that background looks different but anyway we'll take care of that welcome to the program my name is victor law now let's take a look at what we have on iron politics in studio with me i have got two advocates of the high court two gentlemen who are all right let me start with ishmael nyaribo who is an advocate of the high court and kidi mwaga who is a lawyer and a political analyst he's also a columnist um in one of the local dailies i will tell you which one and of course get into one of his pieces that is um written today but nonetheless gentlemen welcome to the program thank you very much um before we started the show my colleagues asked the price of sugar i don't know what's the price of sugar where you come from do you even go to the supermarket <laughs> yeah yeah i go to the supermarket i buy i i, I think uh, the the last i bought it was about uh, is it 430 mm -hmm. Uh, uh, I mean, and and that is at the not at the supermarket exactly, but yes. at, you know these uh, uh, fast shops in the in the in the like, like Total, Shell, those those shops. Mm. It, it might be slightly lower in the supermarket. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that's the price. Yes. You know, Kidimoka comes from a region where sugar comes from, and you have to tell us why the price of sugar is so high. <laughs> Welcome to the program for the first time. Thank you. Uh, no, yes, thank you very much. I have been on KBC before. Okay. It's good to be back. Karibu. Um, uh, when you said two advocates of the High Court, I shook my head. <laughs> in part because I am with senior here. Yes. And masquerading in the law profession is a very serious <coughs> offense. Mm. So yes, I am a lawyer, but yet yes, to sign so. the role of advocates. Thank you. It is imperative to point that out. No problem. Uh, sugar prices have gone up uh, exponentially. But then as Adam Smith would say that uh, there is constantly a hidden hand in determining the prices of goods in a free market. So the question is right now is that is it that the consumption has peaked uh, I mean the demand for sugar, mm -hmm. or is it, is it that supply has dropped significantly? We know that in a year we produce about 600,000 metric tons, but then our consumption is slightly above a million. Mm -hmm. So the question constantly we have been plugging that deficit by sugar from the commercial market. So the question is, what happened? that we did not plug in that deficit in time such that the, price, the, the sugar prices as a result then have shoot up through the roof. Yeah. Yes. So that is the problem. The problem is the question of supply and demand and it seems that we did not act in good time to plug the deficit. Mm. Thank you. Now that but, you come, you come but, from uh, the sugar belt. Yes. Don't we have, I mean I don't get, uh, there is so much sugar in, sugar cane in Mumias, in Muhoroni, mm. Uh, in Migori, in Migori, where I come from, <laughs> yes, in uh, these areas of uh, Transmara. I mm. mean, there's, and then there's land, which actually we can use to plant sugar. So I still don't get why we keep saying there is no sugar in the country. There is no maize. Yes. We have huge tracts of land. I, I never went to any supermarket when I was young, in fact, until I passed university, because mm -hmm. we had maize at home, we had cassava, we had beans. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the question to me would be, why have we stopped planting? Have we stopped so planting? So you, you, you see now, Momia Sugar <coughs> yes. went down. Yes. Many sugar companies, uh, mm -hmm. you know, sugar milling companies mm -hmm. actually went down. Yes. That should be the question, why yes. are we killing the local industry? in favor of bringing contaminated sugar from outside the country. Yeah. Yes. In fact, when you go to Mumias around that area, most of the farmers actually cleared their lands. Yes. They have now resorted into some kind of farming, which, again, if you ask me, could even contribute to the shortage of sugar that we have in the country. But we're st still talking about part of the of sugar. Part of the problem, just to add on to all, all what Sinia is saying, yes. is that the problem could also be part of the economic institutions we have set up. Mm. Uh, are polity has either extractive economic institutions or inclusive economic institutions. Mm -hmm. One thing about extractive economic in institutions is that usually it places economic advantages mm -hmm. in the hands of a few people to the detriment of so many. So that when, 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 when Mumia sugar is underperforming, when Moroni sugar is underperforming, when Sony sugar is unable to employ people as it used to, mm. it is unable to give opportunity as it used to, Sometimes, in part, it is because of the extractive economic institutions that have taken root, and a few people are using these institutions 
for self profiteering at yeah. the expense of the members of the public. But when you look at, for example, Sony Sugar, I mean, they've had their fair share for a very long time. The government trying to bail them out, billions of shillings being pumped there, yes. privatization debate has been there for a very long time. Yes. I mean, from that region, what, yes. what really happens as professionals from that area? Oh, well, I am cautious not to blame politics. Mm -hmm because it is almost akin to you know passing blame yes but then of course politics have got a role to play every year mumias has been a campaign issue so that every government coming into office mm. will go to Malibu nation and promise that we are going to revive mumias sugar usually it is always about a billion shillings mm -hmm. every ele electoral cycle so that when every president is coming, we know that a billion shilling will be going to Mumia's sugar. Mm -hmm. In three months, then there is again nothing happening in Mumia's. Mm -hmm. So I think it is time we also <coughs> fix our politics. We fix people we elect. Yeah. And especially, usually when we talk about people we elect, everyone thinks it is the president. Mm. It starts with the member of parliament you elect, the governor you have, the senator you have. If those people can act in the interest of the people, if they can pile up pressure on the necessary institutions, then in a small way that would, you know, uh, get us out of this uh, uh, revolving door. All right. So yes. you say uh, bottom-up economy, for example, is a very good model if it is implemented, definitely. Then the people in Mashinani would actually benefit. So mm. the people in Mumias mm. should actually go back to doing their sugarcane farming. The people yes. in the highlands should go back to doing their tea farming. They should not approach it. So that the Mashinani people are being assisted. So this is where now... We want to see whether bottom-up model is working or not. In fact, we should now not be worried about cartels and we should not be worried about uh, the politics, the cycle of polit uh, mm. politics played in yes. the sugar industries and, and, and other agri agricultural yes. industries. Mm -hmm. What is the bottom-up economy? What is the bottom-up model doing? Is yes. it saving? Mm. Is it helping? Or it was actually simply uh, semantics used for political gain? Mm. I, I think this is the test. Is the UDA bottom-up model going to turn around things as promised or not. At least so far to date, in the sugar industry, that, that has not happened. In the tea industry, uh, there is a bit of movement, yes. but uh, in, 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 in maize farming, this is still a shortage. So, so I think because Kenyans have <coughs> discovered big money, mm. yes. and they have realized if we come together between the four of us and go to state house and speak to the president he mm. may hear us yeah. and the president will be kind to hear you but when you're bringing the sugar you're actually bringing it to kill the kenyans mm. so there is a big problem about whether kenyans want to be honest with their thi with, with their with, with their dealings or they want to be dishonest and kill mm. people so I, I, we should have no reason really why we miss sugar gentlemen when you look at the cost yeah. of importing sugar <clears throat> in the country and um that aspect of supporting farmers and bailing out these companies. We have got Mumia Sugar with issues with, with, with Sarai and all that. Sony Sugar is not the way it used to be in the 90s or even the 80s. Or I even mean, early 2000. Uh, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Why not stop the importation of sugar? Right now we have got a scandal. I mean, a gentleman was arrested at the airport yesterday and the government is now running around 20,000 bags of sugar gone missing. All these are poison at sugar. Mm -hmm. Just a question. Why not support farmers and say we are not going to do importation of sugar? Now, what is the deficit? Farmers, what are you lacking? Mm. Is it uh, having modernized machines in Sony Sugar, in Mumias, wherever it is? Then now move forward and start helping these people to come back to life instead of importing sugar. Let me start with you, Wakili. Uh, thank you. Uh, Wakili, what Wakili said last, uh, just before you ask, post the question, yeah. He has actually spoken to what I was I had uh, described earlier as extractive economic institutions. Uh -huh. It's only that he has is is more blunt, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing about the problem with the sh the, the sugar and mm. even the food sector is that I am cautious again not to pass blame. But then, because we have a new regime administration in office, it is time that that administration gets its acts together. And an, an, an administration can only get its acts together when, among other things, it is able to feed its people. Mm. So that part of the challenge is that we have got a rising population, but we are getting increasingly broken food systems. So that it is not only about sugar. Senior has spoken about maize. Yeah. There is a challenge with the other sectors. There is a question of the value chain. So that 
uh, say is 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 a, a harder in Samburu or Isiolo getting value for his cattle uh, when the cattle is brought to the Ke to the Kenya Meat Commission and you know slaughtered for beef, mm -hmm. then what happens to the hide? What happens to the hoofs? What happens to the bones? So that I think the Ministry of Agri Agriculture has got its work cut out for it. That we must one be able to plug mm -hmm. the broken food systems. <clears throat> and that is end-to-end -end, uh, vigilance, mm -hmm. production, post-harvest uh, practices, how do we add value to this, uh, to this uh, pro produce, how do we market, how do we remove the middlemen who take advantage of farmers, and then how do we ensure that we avail this food on the table mm. when it is <coughs> fresh, when it is nutritious, when the buyer, the final buyer, gets value for money yeah how do we end the problem of uh, is it called milk glut mm. when we have to pour milk mm. how do we ensure that the maize we produce in the rift valley that we do not have to deal with the question of aflatoxin yeah. so that that food is eaten by our children and then they are you know we don't do, they don't get sick mm. so those are the things that i think we have to deal with as a country yes yeah yes. so just because you said blunt that is true <laughs> what you're actually saying is uh, the president promised that the moment I put my Bible down, I will deal with cartels. <laughs> That's where the secret lies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, by the time you give somebody a license to import sugar, yeah. mm. there's a small process. Now it involves the state house and mm. a few other, maybe sugar authority and, and a few other people. There yeah. are not so many. Yes. So you ask, where are the cartels? Yes. The cartels are not in Nyamira, by the way. They are <laughs> in State House and they are in the Sugar Authority. Yes. For the people bringing in the sugar. I mean, we have to be honest. You know, if we go around the philosophy or semantics, <laughs> our viewers will not understand yes. what is the problem. Yes. So, if we have so much sugar in Sony, Muhoroni, and in Mumias, uh, I mean, sugar cane. Mm. We can import the sugar cane, even as raw as it is. Yes. We can import the sugar canes so that the sugar cane can be taken to Tanzania or Zambia or South Africa to be processed as sugar there. So the local farmer will still earn something mm -hmm. for his pocket. Mm -hmm. We are not doing this. Why? Because the middlemen, so to say cartels, <laughs> want to make big money and more money yeah. at the expense of the local person. And this can be dealt with the president, this can yes. be dealt with UDA very squarely. He has actually said the president is very clear, he will not entertain corruption. We believe him to mm. some extent because he has already handled Kemsa. We have seen how he is uh, ruthlessly dealing with uh, yeah. anybody suspected of cartels. Mm. Now I'm very sure he will deal with uh, this sugar scandal. So this week we will see some people, mm. you know, going home. Mm. you know, yeah. And then uh, fresh people will be appointed and instructed that I mean, for, you know, uh, Kenya is so corrupt, and we always hide behind words. Yeah. If we are all corrupt, if the country is corrupt, why can't we even have rules which at least protect uh, the exposed people from the very corrupt people? Mm. You say that, uh, for example, you cannot, if you bring contaminated sugar, in yes. Kifo. This one we are not negotiating, because you are killing people. So I think that we, sometimes we pretend like we are in a church service. We yes. are in Kenya, and everyone is looking for an opportunity to grab something to eat. Yes. And it is only the fool who walks away from the food. Mm. So why can't we then have rules that once you have achieved reaching and uh, <coughs> you have seen the food, you cannot pick all of it? In the spirit of having a bottom-up economy, <laughs> and you know, yeah. the so, president talked about agribusiness and supporting the farmers. Let me get your views here, gentlemen. Mm. How does this really affect the name of the new administration? How does it affect the stability of, 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 of the new regime? Because um, it says that it started some months back, but now the president is dealing with it currently. Kidi. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure I've got the question. Ask the question again. How does it affect the... <laughs> what exactly? How the does it affect... The, exactly. the corruption. Exactly. The corruption. Because when you look at the importation of sugar, we yes. have it right now. <clears throat> Kemsa had their fair share just the other day. Mm. A couple of guys went home. Kebs is on the line, as yes. we speak. As yes. a few people, the president will say that he's also going to act. Mm. Do you think that the president is speaking on a high note? Uh, well, I think one thing we will be kind to the president mm. that he is in office just seven months, and the go governance in itself yeah. is not, you know, instant coffee. There is usually the, you know, the difficult bits to grapple with. Mm -hmm. And as uh, Colin Powell once said. 
that the American government is like a beast. Mm. When you kick it, at, kick its legs, it takes two years for the pain to be transmitted to the brain. Mm. But that is also true for governments across the globe, including our government. So I want us to momentarily t take a brief look at the anatomy of corruption, mm -hmm. especially big corruption. I mean, that's big corruption. I mean, big corruption in the public uh, space. Yeah. So there is usually three institutions involved. There is usually the presidency. Mm -hmm. There is usually the security sector. There is usually the treasury. Look at Goldenberg. What about the judiciary? I want to big corruption. Okay. Yes. So especially one that you'd call a smash and grab. Mm. Look at Goldenberg. Look at Anglo leasing. Look at Eurobond. So part of why currently I think the anti-corruption crusaders have got a reason to smile mm. is that usually the architects of big corruption usually uh, uh, blindside the president or they capture the presidency. Usually the promise is we need to fundraise for re-election. Yeah. So you look at Goldenberg, there was need to fundraise for an election. You look at Anglo leasing, People are building watches to one for referendum and for re-election. I do not know if that was the same case for, for, for Eurobond, mm -hmm. but it is imperative to note that it took place in first term. Mm -hmm. So the, this is a president who has been elected into office when he did not have much in comparison to the combined financial muscles of his opponents. Mm -hmm. So I do not think that right now, Robert Barons would go to him and tell him that, Mr. President, we need to fundraise. Yeah. So we need to smash and grab, say, KBC. Of course, KBC is right now. There is nothing to be uh, grabbed. <laughs> we need to, you know, you, you understand? <laughs> so I think that that is a saving grace. At least I'm safe. And we have, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and we have seen the decisiveness with which he dealt with the Kemsa <clears throat> issue. Part of the challenge in the war against corruption has been the lack of the political yeah. goodwill. You see, by the time President Kibaki was acting in 2005, uh, when Gidongo was now coming out, mm. so much damage had happened. You see, when President Kibaki, I mean President Uhuru, attempted to act on corruption, mm. but you realize that there was also a disconnect at the, uh, at the state law office. Yes. I, should you call it state law office or the criminal justice system? Mm. Yes, there was a disconnect with how prosecution was being conducted. So I think that when we have a political goodwill, when we have a president who is a handsome, mm. that, in my, in my view, would in a big way help uh, streamline the war on corruption. Okay. Yes. Can right. I just want to say this? Uh, there's nothing new that has happened. Corruption has not increased, as uh, we may say. These things were there in the previous regime. They were there even in the regimes of 90s, and, 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 and they, they have always been there. The difference is the UDA campaign mantra was explicitly clear the standards were set they were set at a very they were set at a hyper so the issue today is uh, when you say it, that mm. sugar will come down to 70 shillings and now it is 430 yeah it 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 was to be like this even if Raila Odinga went to state house it was still to go up and higher because the economies of scale are not okay, being... What are some of the indicators? I mean, that's, that's, that's really worrying to the common monarch who says that probably the next two, three years is going to be a thousand shillings. No, what is the... Kg. What I'm trying to say, yes. uh, Victor, uh, just if you give me a moment, mm -hmm. the truth is the economic factors that uh, are affecting the whole globe, the mm -hmm. whole world, mm -hmm. are also affecting Kenya. Yes. yes. What the Raila Odinga Uhuru Kenyatta handshake did they actually were shouldering mm -hmm. some of these expenses through what UDA is very agitated about, which is subsidies. Mm. Mm. And uh, for, to, to enable the former regime bear the, you know, a bit of the you know, burden of the citizens, yeah. they decided if fuel is 180, we will pay 50, so pay 140. Mm -hmm. you, you, you see what happened. Or 100, so pay 100. Now, what William Ruto in his uh, 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 you know, economic policy is telling us is that is wrong because it was creating a hole mm. in the exchequer in our economy. He's saying, you carry on cross for some time until we stabilize, mm -hmm. and then we see whether that fuel can go down to 100. It will never be possible for fuel to go down to 100 shillings because you compare the prices with what is in the, in, in the, in the global market, yeah. it is always going to be higher. 
Now, Kenyans were not prepared for this. Mm. Whether William Ruto and UDA will actually withstand this frustration mm. of citizens is something else. Somebody yes. was telling me, uh, Victor, if Raila Odinga called for Mandamano only on... Mm. On, on food stuff mm -hmm. and mandamano on maisha imepanda. Mm -hmm. I am told in Kericho, in uh, Eldoret, in Wasinigishu, everybody will go to the street. Yeah. The problem is he's bringing in the open the server thing, which scares people that uh, yes. uh, uh, this might expose that, that us. Mischief, yeah. <laughs> are, are, you, are you seeing? Yes. But so if he decides, no, on economic uh, uh, improvement, we want people in the street. Everyone will go. Nobody actually will support uh, the president mm -hmm. at the moment. Yes. Because the, you know, life has gone very high mm -hmm. and people are not eating well as they, as they expected. Yes. So it is not that UDA has come in and has messed anything, really, if we have to be honest with anybody else. Yes. But the promise was so high that the moment I put the Bible down, I will deal with all these targets. Now, the same cartels are approaching you and saying we want to fundraise for 2027. Mm. Now, that is where the problem is. Mm. And, and, and we knew it and we said it before that the economy, eco the economy of this country was not being spoiled by Uhuru Kenyatta. That is really a, fa a fallacy and it was a pure lie. Economic conditions were changing world over after, after COVID. But you chose to say the real culprit is handshake mm. now there is no handshake except the one we saw at the Gormaya and the FC. <laughs> that, 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 that's no more one so we need now to see that uh, the uda as a, as, as, as a leading party should be able to actually make practical the bottom-up mm. model of economy okay so that the little person yes. people are buying you know this uh, small you know goro goro that uh, for for maize eh? mm. yes. they are i'm told it's 200 plus yeah 200 mm. plus mm. so the issue is not even that price mm. how are our people going to eat okay. yes. do we yes. want to suffocate them like shakahola and they will die actually mm. without eating All right, so something let's, must be done by the government let's take a break. i think we just had to start yes. on, a, on on a sweetening note yeah. because sugar is uh, affecting somebody was making some fun out of it that mm. a two kg of sugar is 430 and 50 kg bag of cement is 700 do the math <laughs> <laughs> all right now i want us to do this gentlemen it's um how we do it we promise to have a show but uh, that's how it happens it happens that way so let's give it a quick wrap on what really happens and uh, you said that you did a bit of some research on this yeah what no what i was telling you is um uh, the the after agreement mm. is trying to accommodate uh, African market mm. uh, uh, and about f f 44 43 44 countries have, have actually ratified that agreement and yes. <coughs> about 10 11 more are supposed to uh, sign a ratification mm. what that means is uh, you know there has been a, a intention to have one you know currency in Africa mm. have a bigger market you know, there are, there, are, there are about, about how many people? Are we about a billion people in Africa or something like that? <laughs> this will form a global market mm. for the European, for Americas, for Asians, so that we agree under this agreement that I can sell something in Morocco without a lot of uh, embargoes, I mean, I mean that yeah. a lot of, you know, taxes, mm. a lot of uh, uh, hiccups. So, so it's important, but how it is important for Kenya is this way. What are we going to export? To South Africa, what are we going to export to Libya? Mm. Other than buying sugar from Pakistan and buying things, maize from Zambia, what are we going to export? They, it is earmarked that there will be tourism export, <coughs> professional services. I mean, the kind of labor we have in Kenya, actually, it can be exported anywhere in the world. Mm. So what they are saying is there will be, you know, uh, less uh, uh, red carpet when we are going to do business within Africa, once yeah. all these countries come together. And that is important so that instead of destroying sugar in Mumias or other places, mm. we can now plant and decide that we can sell it either in Libya or where in those countries shortage. where it is needed. Okay. That's the whole point. Yes. What was the timeline that you're looking at in terms of this? 2023, 2030? No, it was, no, no, it has already taken effect in 2022. You can see this is a third uh, conference. Mm -hmm. It has already taken effect, but has it been felt in Kenya? That is a big question now. That is the issue. <laughs> and, 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 that, and, and you know, it is the government, and you can see now professionals have come together under mm -hmm. the, the Kenya Investment uh, uh, Authority mm -hmm. to, first of all, sensitize and, and make Kenyans know that there is such a deal. Yeah. You, you, you know there is now uh, a free entry to South Africa. You mm -hmm. remember that? Yes. yes. This kind of thing is going to be enlarged into 
yes. all of Africa. Yes. So how will Kenyans take advantage <coughs> of that if they don't know? Mm. If the government uh, operatives are going to engage cartels instead of going straight to the people and tell them, you know what, you can fly to South Africa and mm. try a job. You can uh, go to Cameroon and, and try a job. A and these are the, you know, uh, political temperature, economic temperature. This is the lifestyle. This is the social, social lifestyle of yeah. that country. Mm. So it's all about how the government can tell its people what are the opportunities in this agreement. Right. If you create it for your families and you create it for your friends and cronies and cartels, mm -hmm. then still Kenyans will not enjoy the benefits of that mm. agreement. Yes. Mm. All right. Yes, Okili. Uh, what Senior is saying uh, that our, 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 what I don't know is that um, in the day and age when we are struggling with the problem of the dollar and the shilling, mm. you realize that one of the ways through which we could plug the problem was that if we were having an export led economy. Mm. So that today, as Senior puts it, is that what are we exporting to, the South, to South Africa? What are mm. we taking to Zambia? What are we exporting out there? Yeah. That way, right now, we would be attracting the dollar. And it is the pressure that the shilling is having against the dollar. Uh, as we are moving forward as an economy, we must now look at the African free trade area mm -hmm. and how we can take advantage of it to ensure that we use it as a tool through which we can alleviate poverty and lift our people out of yeah. the sari. Yeah. Thank you. Gentlemen, um, sure. I want to release you. We will, but before that, there's a big event happening today. Maybe get your word, mm -hmm. one or two minutes. It's on the front page. The Jubilee confusion and, of course, Uhuru exerts uh, control. The NDC happening today, and we've had a lot of talk about this. We have got, quote unquote, the faction, the Kanini Kega faction, and now the Jeremiah Kioni faction. Of course, when I talk to some of the officials, they deny that and say that, you know, there is no faction. We only have one Jubilee party, mm. and that is the real <coughs> Jubilee as per the Registrar of Political Parties. Let me get your voice on this, Wakili. What are we looking at today? I think, Victor, these kind of headlines, uh, they look more sponsored than real. <laughs> because uh, there will be NDC. Yes. I mean, if it's NDC, Victor, you know, there is only one mm. party called Jubilee Party in Kenya. There is only one. There are no two. There would be two, either called uh, Jubilee Party, uh, Jubilee Party, Jubilee Party, Kanini Kega, Jubilee mm. Party, Uru Kenyatta. And they can register if they want uh, before the political parties register. Yeah. That has not happened. There are internal disputes and complaints going on and probably the registrar has been served with notices of we don't agree with leadership of so and so and therefore this is the leadership we want. That has not been ratified by the registrar of political parties. Mm. He, she must ratify for anybody to say that there is actually a fact. So what is going on when you say confusion and all that is actually meant to make it look like Jubilee party has two. Mm. In the real sense, there is a Jubilee party, and they have a national chairman, they have a, a, a national secretary general, and these are the people. The ones registered in the political party's uh, 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 office are uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and, and Jeremiah Kioni. Mm. But of course, we know that uh, Kanini Kega wants to come in and also be maybe a secretary general, and make, uh, what's the name of the Sabina beautiful Chege. lady, Sabina Chege, mm. <coughs> to be the, the, the chair. Yes. That is a process. Where there are such disputes, they normally have in the Constitution and in the Political Parties uh, Act, it mm -hmm. allows and it actually compels a party to have internal dispute mechanism. Mm. So this is where the arbitration board, the, 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 the dispute board within the party, will sit and hear Uhuru Kenyatta and hear Sabina Chege and hear Kanini Kega and hear Jeremiah Kioni. And then it will make a decision. Once the board has made a decision, if somebody is not happy with that decision, mm -hmm. it will go to the political parties tribunal. tribunal. And the tribunal will also pronounce itself. Yes. And if somebody is not happy, it will go to the high court. Mm -hmm. So we have not done all this, and you are saying there is confusion in, in, in UPD and, <laughs> and there are party, you know, factions. You know, mm. factions are always there. Yeah. I mean, you, you have factions in the home also. You yes. know. Mm. Children will say, no, mommy has said it correctly, that you are not right. Yes. This, you cannot, uh, you know, uh, fuel any dispute in this nature. And, mm. and, and, and Victor, I, I just want to repeat that this is all about testing democracy in the country. No one should try to kill one party in favor of another one. Yeah. The more the parties and the more they are established in the country, they're better for everyone. They're better for actually all people. Today, people say, if we didn't have Raila Odinga, mm -hmm. mm. what would have happened? I mean, who would have brought to the fore this forensic?
conduct of Raila Odinga to help us know that no, you cannot do this, no, you cannot do this, a government should do things like this. So we sometimes, you know, just complain and, and, and uh, whine and, 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 and blame, mm. but in the real sense, we need Raila Odinga the same way we need William Ruto, the president, and mm. the same way we need uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, and the same way we need Wachakoya. Mm -hmm. yes. Every spirit of the nation should be accommodated and uh, the executive must yeah. be tolerant about that. Mm. It is why today's NDC mm. should be conducted. Let them make their decisions. Let us see what the decisions are. And I believe the government should keep of this. Mm. Uh, the UDA people should keep of this. Let Jubilee mess themselves <laughs> if, it, if they have to. Mm -hmm. And then let those decisions they make today be filed at the register of political parties yeah. then we start really dispute that but to try to sponsor some heading or sponsor some skirmishes or sponsor some divisions mm. that are basically imaginary is actually unfair to the democracy mm. of our country we are looking at a lot of things happening at the ndc uh kiddi and now at the end of the day they'll have their pronouncements at the end of that ndc this comes barely after the last one after, just before election mm. We are seeing former President Uru Kenyatta yeah, most likely is going to attend because mm. he's the national chair. Mm. But what are we likely to see? Him to retain the seat, um, being a former president, should he quit completely active politics and hand over the mantle to someone else? But most importantly, why this crumble for the heart of Jubilee? Uh, I think to begin mm. with is that I find the president, uh, President Uru Kenyatta, I find him in a very precarious position mm. and i call that position precarious because the people who are fighting him over the heart and soul of jubilee are people who ideally should not fight president uru kenyatta over the control of jubilee mm. so that the mere fact that kanini kega and uh, and and my and sabina chege mm. are uh, inviting him to a duel and he shows up in itself gives credit to Kadini Kega and mm -hmm. Sabina Chege. Mm. But then the question is, why should we be here less than a year after elections? When just uh, about a year ago, yeah. there was an NDC that said that uh, Jubilee was going into Azimio, and uh, Jubilee should ideally should be in Azimio if we were you know, uh, legal Puritans, mm -hmm. if we were uh, observing the law strictly. Then it speaks to the question of interest and how our politics is still you know not anchored on ideology and principles because if it were then i think that in this parliamentary term we would be contented with jubilee mm. being in azimio mm -hmm. but then the question is have they been treated fairly in that azimio have they received all that they bargained for remember that when sonar waluka was in detention mm -hmm. was in committee uh, Jubilee Party said that he had, they had nominated Honorable Waluke for the uh, PSC, uh, as a commissioner to the PSC. Yes. That did not materialize. So the question is, what exactly is happening in Jubilee? So that when political parties begin to conduct themselves with a the hygiene, mm -hmm. if Jubilee Party and its leadership said that they wanted to be in, 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 in Azimio, we should have seen that even after election. Yeah. So that if someone was saying last year that he was in Azimio, but six months, uh, barely less than a year after election, he is willing to dump Azimio, mm -hmm. the question is what has happened? Mm -hmm. And uh, about institutions, even, even about political parties as institutions, have they exhausted um, this, the mechanisms they have within the party? including but not limited to dispute resolution yeah. so that if there of are small tiffs, has not raised any conflict with you so, know, so that if there are small tiffs which are normal within yeah. a political party have those mechanisms been able to run their full scale mm. full circle and made a determination a determination that the leadership is willing to respect mm. thank yeah, you victor thank you my brother victor you know you, who is fighting uhuru kenyatta this is a very important question and uh, i i, I and don't that's why the question is yeah. Why would yeah. somebody want him out of... Yeah, but who is fighting Uhuru Kenyatta? Is it Sabina Chege or is it Kanini Kega? I mean, we've been in this country, at least I've been here for some time now. Mm -hmm. Even without reading, I have practically seen our history. Uh, I don't think Kanini Kega can want to go into a duel with the Uhuru Kenyatta or the Kenyatta family by any standards. Neither is Sabina Chege. Mm. I mean, they cannot.
they can't afford it. So who really is behind Kanini Kega and Sabina Chega to fight Uru Kenyatta? That, I think, is the pregnant question. Whoever that is must also realize that uh, it will consume his time and money before he can accomplish his, mo his objective. Mm -hmm. The Kenyatta family in this country, I mean, it's good to know how things work, but it's also good to know our history. If you want to deal with uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, whatever promises you've made that I will deal with, either Uhuru Kenyatta or the Kenyatta family. The other day, uh, I, I think they attacked, the, the, they invaded the, the northern land, uh, yeah. I think North belonging to the Kenyatta family. Seen along the and as far as Kenyatta family was concerned, I have not heard them say nothing. Mm. Uh, uh, you didn't touch them. Mm. Mm. So you talk about uh, uh, wanting to deal with Uhuru Kenyatta, I think it would waste the precious time of Kenyans, and it will actually involve a lot of resources mm. which would have been applied to bring down the cost, the cost of, of living. Yeah. <laughs> but in terms of Kanini Kega as a, an individual, as a politician, it mm -hmm. is within his right, and as a party member, going to hold a separate NDC, again, I think that is his right mm. with Sabina Chege. And, and Uhuru Kenyatta will go ahead, hold the NDC, he will unleash his money, he will unleash his leadership skills. Remember now, people, some people, mm. a good number of people now like him more mm. than they liked him before because of what they have realized that, oh, we were given promises and they have not been fulfilled. Mm. So I think that when people are engaging a former president, and particularly the first family, you know, there is a talk of who is the kingpin in Mount Kenya. Yeah. Yes. For some people, that is a question they are still grappling, grappling with. with. Yes. But Anybody who knows Kenyan history will not even take a moment to consider that question. Yes. Okay. The kingpin for Mount Kenya is known. The, 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 the ones who are trying to build their career, uh, you know, one time member of parliament, then you become deputy president, then you say, I'm kingpin. <laughs> Honestly, that is not a bad idea. But we want to save our children from not mm -hmm. wasting their time. Mm -hmm. They must understand that the kingpin in Mount Kenya is known. Of course, there were mistakes during the 2022 prior to that and, and how uh, Uhuru Kenyatta treated uh, his people. Yep. There, there has been a complaint about that. Was it but or was it just a political at kind least that, of... At least they said that themselves yeah. from Mount Kenya. Mm -hmm. So once that is resolved, the kingpin of Mount Kenya is not a debate. And to try to smash a kingpin by appointing two, three people to try to do something is actually a complete waste of time for Kenya and a complete waste of resources. Okay. So, Standard puts it, is it a do or die moment for Uhuru Kenyatta and Jubilee in general? I don't think it is a do or die for Jubilee, mm. or for, I mean for President Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm. The reason being is that in 97, let us look at history. Yes. In 97, we had Raila Molodinga who was in Ford Kenya, mm. 96. Then when he was unable to wrestle for the Kenya mm -hmm. from Wamalwa, he went and registered the NDP yes. Tinga. Yes. Yeah. And 97, <clears throat> the entire Luanyanza was a tractor by the time we were going to the elections. Mm. I think that even if President Uhuru Kenyatta were to leave Jubilee for whoever, the only thing I think that there could be the source of the conflict, the other reason that could be the source of the conflict, yeah. apart from kingpinship as senior puts it, is the question of the political parties fund, mm. which is about a hundred million a year. And of course, Jubilee oh, being the third, is third largest party. Of course, that is, that is a drop in the ocean. Yeah. So that President Kenyatta could leave that, set up another political party, and possibly capitalize on potential missteps mm. of the current administration and whip the entire Mount Kenya into a different political party mm -hmm. in preparation for 2027. So it is a wait and see scenario in how it plays out. But I don't think it is a do or die mm. for the for <laughs> President Uhuru. Yes. Yeah, Wakili, do or die? No, no, definitely not. As Labadi has elucidated it very clearly mm. that, uh, I mean, Uhuru Kenyatta would <coughs> form a different party, call it Uhuru Kenyatta Party or whatever. And, uh, and give them 100 million yeah. every other year. He just uh, pumps in uh, 100 million. It's not a big deal for him. That is honesty. Yes. Because it, it's, it's no good to, to philosophize issues. <laughs> he can give them that money. Yes. But I also tend to think that uh, he is a very circumspect person 
as a president uh, who has been in this country for some time, he is circumspect. He, he could have come out. But in which country, Victor, do you find people silencing former presidents? Mm. We saw in the United States, uh, Barack Obama went on leave after leaving office. But when uh, Joe Biden was campaigning, he, he came, came out. out fully. Yeah. And uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, 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 Donald Trump? Yes. He has come back. So I think we should nurture democracy and be tolerant mm. about the, f the, the dynamics of democracy. Mm. Democracy is like evil and good angels sitting in the same room and each of them have a right. So it's not good to say this particular person should exit political sin mm. and completely go into oblivion. That, that my, is really my, not my correct. My question to you, gentlemen, before I let you go. So at the end of the day, ratifications will be made, pronouncements will be made, and they'll, they, they are, they'll have their say at the NDC. Yes. So what should we look at moving forward at the end of closed business today? Kidi. Uh, well, I think that, or, uh, as Jiro Achebe puts it, that let the eagle patch and let the crow patch. Mm. So of course, both sides will, the, the NDC will proceed, of course, after it proceeds. Or of course, that determination will be presented to the registrar of political parties. Yeah. Registrar if there are will any changes in the party. Yes, if there is any changes, mm -hmm. registrar will pronounce herself on those changes, on their legality. If any party feels aggrieved, mm -hmm. it will go to to the political parties tribunal. And of course, the appellate process is so long, mm. so that when it is exhausted, that is when we will know who who ideally has the control of Jubilee. Yeah. But until then, I think that uh, it is a wait-and-see scenario. Mm. Thank you. The, the former president has been so quiet about this issue. Is that spoken? Uh, the likes of... Uh, you mean the former president? Exactly, former president. Yeah. He's been so quiet about it. Yeah. I mean, Because I think Uru Kenyatta is not necessarily a deep politician. Okay, I, I want to put it so that I can, I can, I can be understood in context. Mm. He doesn't play politics the usual way, like, for example, how Raila can play politics. Yeah. I expected uh, Uru Kenyatta to actually go to Mama Mukami's and barrio, yeah. and I expect him to come and uh, meet uh, the, the president now, the president, you know, uh, William Ruto, shake hands and do exactly what Raila did. Mm. But Raila, because of his deep understanding of politics, he did that. And it gave him a lot of mileage. Yes. So, but you see, Uhuru Kenyatta, for his wisdom, he did not think, I need to do that. So I believe uh, Jubilee going forward will weaken a little bit. Mm. It will not be as it were before, like in 2013 or 2017. It is going to weaken a little bit mm. and probably go down the curve for, for, for a, a year or two. And then we will see whether actually uh, Uhuru Kenyatta can actually uh, mm. bring it up. Right. But I don't think Uhuru Kenyatta will back off and say that uh, uh, somebody well. else has taken over. Maybe they will have Jubilee. Ju ju Asili. Jubilee. As <laughs> and Jubilee Kenya. <laughs> Gentlemen, I want to read something here. And you'll tell me who wrote this article. <clears throat> Ruto might do better than his predecessors in anti-graft war. On page 16. Mm -hmm. Kidimaga, do you know the author? <laughs> of course, that is yes, truly. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's what do you mean? Ruto <laughs> might be do better than his predecessors in anti graft war. Coming days after the Kemsa scandal, yes. he's now seeing sugar scandal, yes. and he said that he's going to clean up the mess. Yes. Mm. Yes. Please, in one minute. Thank you. There is a reason why it is important to have political goodwill in the fight against corruption. Mm -hmm. Because I, as I, I must have mentioned earlier that big corruption, they first capture the presidency then they capture the security sector, then they capture the treasury. In a minute, look at Goldenberg. Why was James Kanyot, who was then the spy chief, a co-director of Goldenberg International? Hmm. And then he identified himself in those papers as a farmer, while at the same time he was a spy chief. It, there, was a, there was a reason behind it. Um, look at uh, anglo leasing Why was Kiraitu Murungi and uh, Chris Murungaru sucked into, I mean, no, not Kiraitu Murungi, David Muiraria and Kiraitu Murungi sucked into the Anglo leasing. One was in treasury, the other one was in security. So when we have a president who is able to stand up to the players in big corruption, if he is able to tell his security chiefs that I can't tolerate corruption, is he, if he is able to stand up to the mandarins at treasury mm. that we are not going to tolerate big corruption in a big way that would help us in the fight against <coughs> corruption and we have seen the decisiveness that he demonstrated in the kemsa mm. scandal 
so that if the president is able to stay the course in the war against corruption, mm. in my view, I think that for the first time, we may be able to make huge progress towards in the war against corruption. And why is it more important now uh, that uh, we have the President William Ruto in the fight against corruption? While coming into office, he didn't make any grand promises that, that I am going to have zero tolerance to corruption. I, he did not do that. Mm. But we have seen he has acted decisively. President Kibaki, what ailed President Kibaki and President Uhuru was that if that political will was there, then it was deployed too late yeah. or deployed in a manner that it appeared that it was seeking to settle political scores. Mm. Look at the anti-corruption uh, war of 2018, mm -hmm. 2019, immediately after handshake. So that initially, the initial feeling was that, oh, President Uhuru, Uhuru is fighting corruption. But eventually it appeared that it was designed in a manner to weaken political opponents. So that because now the president is going after his own people, people he appointed himself, then we think that, we do, as we are waiting to see, we think that he is <coughs> striking the right chords. All right. Thank you. Let me get you something you wrote here. It is yes. important to have a president who is able to stand up to the sophisticated network of corrupt cartels yes. and their political agents. Yes. We've seen a majority of politicians shying away, you know, when a politician is touched yes. because your backyard voted for me to man. Yes. I'm not in a position to crucify you. Yes. How will the president navigate through this? Because from what is being said that some senior politicians are also um, embedded in the in the Kemsa scandal, yes. and even the sugar scandal. At some point, the president will be will have to be willing to remain agnostic to the political consequences mm -hmm. in the fight against corruption. Yeah. Secondly, remember that um, the president will now, if he if he seek it, the corrupt uh, the, the 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 network of corruption may want to punish him in the second term when he's seeking re-election. Okay. But remember that... That is a danger. That's yes. why the question I've asked you. Yes, and I, I, the answer is, mm. there is a lot of people who did not vote for the president in the first term. You are truly included. Mm -hmm. But the president is increasingly winning people over in how he is managing the politics. Mm. Forget the economy. The economy, of course, has got other challenges that Sini had mentioned, including but not limited to the international market shocks. Mm -hmm. So the way he's managing the politics, for instance, when the president is elected, his first two trips, he comes to Luanyanza with a coherent development agenda. He sits down with elected leaders. You realize that by the time the president is going to seek re-election, the sizable chunk of votes is going to, uh, to Ghana from Luanyanza backyard mm -hmm. and other places that originally did not vote for him that are going to be willing as, uh, to say that, look, for a moment, let us give this guy another chance. So I think that when the president is able to manage the politics and is able to be decisive in the war against corruption I, uh, and he is willing to remain agnostic mm -hmm. to the political consequences of fighting corruption, I think the president will sail to, uh, will go back to office in the second time without a struggle. Wakili, assume, assume your story <coughs> is mm. not the author. Yes. But this headline, Ruto might do better yes. than his predecessors in anti-graft war. Yes. Assume he's not here. I think you must appreciate mm -hmm. what is the philosophy of William Ruto and uh, it will be every single step it yes. will have the Christology and uh, the moral philosophical basis for whatever he does. And having studied the Bible mm. very closely, he knows actually that you can speak like this today and tomorrow the circumstances can change yeah. and you have not lied. You know, <clears throat> you know uh, my brother has mentioned that uh, Ruto did not speak too much about corruption mm. before elections. How could he have spoken about corruption? He would not have been elected. Everyone around him is engaged or involved yeah. in some kind of uh, corruption scandal. But he is also now aware that since I promised to uh, raise the standards of living and have people enjoy their lives, you know, by better economic uh, standards, he is aware he cannot succeed if we are losing three billion, four billion at Kemsa. Mm. And uh, in the state house, they used to lose two billion daily, they say, <laughs> in the previous regime. Yes. So how can he do that? <clears throat> he knows that my friends are the men and women who are used to picking. Yeah some choir choir from here and there. <laughs> he knows it in his heart. But you've also seen that Ruto likes his friends. Like 
whether you are what you are, he likes you. Mm. But he's aware that if I continue to be with my friends who cannot help me in the agenda, they have to go. That's why we saw that uh, mm. the PS in, uh, in health was actually shown the door mm. and several other senior uh, staff. Yes. He will continue doing that. I am very sure that in two years, mm. the current leaders will be out and Ruto would have picked new ones. That is where uh, Kidi comes in to say, that then people will start changing their mind about William Ruto because mm -hmm. William Ruto is smart, he's clever. He knows that uh, <clears throat> if he shows you what he wants to do tomorrow, yeah. you will <laughs> you you will block him from, from from so he keeps quiet as if as if he doesn't know and then tomorrow he actually decides I will do this. So if he can fire half of and, and you can see he chose people half a sadly. Mm -hmm. He has picked people from the Kalenjin uh, land mm -hmm. half a sadly. <laughs> All these guys will go up. In a very short time, like two years, I can predict, they will all go because these are people who are hungry. These are people who are used to uh, corruption uh, deals. So he will simply be saying, I gave you a chance. Mm. You, yourself, so messed you come from my backyard. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So, and he has started to show that by, mm. you know, to fire peers mm. was something that was done at one o'clock uh, uh, news <laughs> by this station, actually. <laughs> but now, he, we are only reading that so-and-so uh, was fired. So, so he's not going to stop at anything, I think. It will only take maybe two years mm. for, 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 for some of us, like Kidi, to actually be named uh, a PS yeah. without any ado. <laughs> Gentlemen. Uh, so let me add to it, something to it. <clears throat> yes. Uh, you know, there has always been this powerful cabal around the president mm. holding no formal office, but wielding immense power. One they thing are, I have they are faceless the, officers. Yes. One thing I have seen the president do is that um, the bulk of those people around him, he has given them state appointments. Mm -hmm. In large part, in my view, I think that's something to celebrate because when they are given state appointments, yeah. they, are, they can therefore be brought within the, uh, the, the prism of accountability mm. mechanisms of the state so that if you say still, you can be held accountable. But you see, when you are the president, you are known as the president's man. You are holding no uh, formal uh, opposition, but then you are moving around, you know, intimidating businessmen and doing this and that. That can be very dangerous. Mm. I think it is something the president has done. He has attempted to ensure that everyone is holding a formal position, which means they can be formally held accountable, and it is a good thing in the war against corruption. Thank you. Gentlemen, we promised to stop at 9. We've done up to 9.30. You are good people. Thank <laughs> you so much. All right. But to mention that... Um, Advice Mundalo, National Youth Chairman, Jubilee, you promised to come to the show, but you did not come. We have to shame you. That is the way to go. <laughs> you, exactly. We have to give it the way it is because your people promised, we promised people that you're coming to the show and there's a larger population that was waiting for your contribution to the show, but you did not come. Your seat was here until it was taken out by the producer himself. You can do better, Advice. You know that. All right, gentlemen, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Ishmael Nyaribo, who is an advocate of the High Court and a governance political uh, uh, analyst as well as Kidi Mwaga joining me on set for the first time. He's also a lawyer. a lawyer and governance and policy expert and analyst. Thank you so much for joining us on the show and even you as a viewer for your valid company. Let's meet tomorrow here on KBC Channel 1. My name is Victor Lo. Have a good morning. Bye-bye. Wow, thank, thank you. you.